trying to write a blog post on grooming arm and loop, or grooming loop safety for about a month now. And every time I come across it, I go, I can't explain what I'm trying to say. So I need to show you in person some of what I'm finding out and some of what I really truly feel about grooming loops. I'm going to use my little stuffed toy here to demonstrate some because we would never want to do this on a real life dog. First things first, I think grooming loops are extremely important to grooming safety. I cannot imagine working without one. Many times the dogs are stable. When you put them on, they know what they're there for. If you don't have them on there, they tend to do this. They will run all over the place. They can get all away from you. And then something as simple as a slip-on grooming loop, not pulled tight, will prevent them from being able to do that. Now, I want to start off with the one thing that every grooming loop needs to have, and that is a quick release. Panic snap, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, if a dog starts to flip out and is flailing and flopping and everything else, you cannot get your hand up here in many cases. Maneuver this around to pull off. It, it, just, it can take a while to get up there to do that. With a panic snap, if too much pressure is exerted on it, it will snap on its own and you will need to replace it. But the nice thing about this, it's just that quick. It is very simply like that and that dog is off that table. It is loose, it is no longer connected to this and it cannot fall off and choke itself. That's critical for safety, first of all. If you don't have a quick release snap, get one. They're available at tax stores, and this one happens to be on a groomer's helper um, loop extender, which I think may be the best thing ever to happen to a grooming arm, is this, group, is this loop extender, and I'm going to show you why in just a second as well. But with a built-in safety release, best thing ever. You need to have one if you're going to use a grooming loop, and I think if you're using a rear loop and a neck loop, you, also, you need it on both ends. And I want to clarify something here. What I have in front of me are grooming loops. They are not grooming nooses. Nooses exist. They are used to hang people with. And in rodeo work, they use a noose to loop a loose animal and pull it to them because it tightens up and it isn't going to come off. Grooming loops are safe. Grooming nooses are dangerous. And I'm going to discuss that with you again in a few minutes as well. But at any rate, I want to talk about this first. We all know what a pain in the neck it is to raise and lower your grooming arm to be able to use the same loop on every dog. With the groomer's helper loop extender, you don't need that. You connect it here. You pull it here. And I have my arm down low enough that it will show on the table. Normally it would be way up here. I can use the same loop on any size dog simply by using my extender. Yeah, sometimes this little flop here gets in the way, but what I find I do with it is I tuck it up here. It's no longer in my way. It means I never have to adjust my grooming arm. And for those of you who have been grooming a while, you know that if you don't get that tightened down exactly right, they will slam down. Well, the groomer's helper arms don't. And I don't believe that my ultra lift arms do, but most of them will. They just they will just slam down if they're not tightened enough. And the more you mess with them, the less likely you are to have them tightened down. Without ever having to adjust your arm to groom a dog, you eliminate that entire possibility as well. And honestly, I've seen dogs' heads get busted open and groomers' heads busted open by that part right there hitting a dog as it came down hard. This tool eliminates that entire process. I don't really know what took so long to develop this. When I was in grooming school, we had chains that attached to here, and we could hook them up. And that worked, but this is a lot better looking. It's a lot easier to clean, and it's a lot safer. At any rate, now that we've discussed the groomer's loop extender and the panic snap, which again, you see how fast that comes off, I'm going to set it aside for a second, and I want to discuss different types of grooming loops with you. I have several different kinds here. Um, I don't think I have every kind, but I have several different ones. It seems to me I have about eight different kinds here. This is just your typical nylon loop with a slide. 
it has benefits that I'm going to show you now. First of all, it's never going to get on there too tight. If you put it around the dog, dog's neck and the dog starts to pull, that slide will work its way up. If a dog is struggling and wants to get out, when it pushes, it will push that loop up and it will allow it to get out. It's actually a safety feature, which we'll discuss again in a minute. Another way to use a grooming loop, however, and these are really good for this, is instead of putting it around the neck, put it around the shoulder and behind one leg. That actually is going to give you quite a bit of control. The dog is not going to be able to go anywhere, and pressure is not going to be put on his neck. For those of you who are not aware, a dog struggling against a grooming loop can cause serious eye damage or trachea damage. Even if it's just a regular grooming loop, it can happen. But with a grooming noose, it will happen even more often. And I'll, again, I'll get into that in a second, but I want to make that clear. It can happen with any type of loop. So if you have a dog who's fighting severely, what happens is you have a jugular vein and a carotid artery. They put too much pressure on the vein. No. Other way around. They put too much pressure on the carotid artery. No, I was right the first time. On um, the jugular vein, it, the carotid artery continues to pump blood up into the head, and then it has nowhere to go. Blood comes into the head via the artery, via the carotid artery, and comes out on the jugular vein. If the jugular vein is blocked, even by a grooming loop, pressure from that, pressure builds up, blood vessels and eyes burst, and you have a serious problem, because now it looks as if you beat a dog. The dog has eye trauma. It can also lead to pressure in the brain and cause mental problems and damage in the skull, including stroke. It can happen in less than a minute. So it really doesn't have to be a whole lot, especially if a dog is fighting you. And I'll be honest, I've had it happen to me. That's how I know it will happen. I had a puppy recently on my table, probably within the last six months. It was his third groom. He had been excellent the first two times. The third time, not so much. He decided to freak out on me, out of nowhere. Just started flipping and fighting and turning and scratching. And by the time I got my, even with a quick release, but I had to get my hands on the dog before I could take the quick release down. Because if I didn't get my hands on him and have him in my control, when I let go of that loop, he was going to be on the floor. And then we would have had a major problem. We could have had a dead dog or a, broken leg or something along those lines. In the less than one and a half minutes it took me to gain control and release the loop, he had broken blood vessels in both eyes because he was putting so much pressure here. And when the blood pressure goes up as they are flipping out and stressing, more blood pumps into the head. And then again, there's nowhere for it to go. So it can happen to anyone, even when you're not intending for it to. His loop was not tight, by the way. He was putting pressure on it himself. He was leaning down and trying to get away, and the more he fought against the loop, the more damage he was doing to himself. And I simply couldn't react fast enough. Had I had him looped this way, it would have avoided the whole problem. It would have never happened. This is the way I prefer to loop dogs. That day, for some reason, I didn't do it that way. At any rate, this is a safe way to do it. Also, we have lots of toy breeds who have collapsing tracheas, and if you put too much pressure with a grooming loop, even if it's light pressure, it can cause them to start to cough. And when they start to cough, they start to press down, and that causes more coughing, which causes more pressure, which can actually lead to the dog dying. Collapsing trachea cuts off their air supply, and they can die that way. So if you're not sure, or if you just really want to play it safe, loop them this way. Again, this is just a basic loop with a slide. Most of them are made that way. They're relatively safe when used correctly and under good supervision. I'll hang that over here on my gross helper. This is another one that just slides. It has a metal slide and it slides pretty well. The difference with this one is when, it, when you go to pull on it like this, it doesn't move. So if a dog is pulling, it's not going to slide apart. 
Sometimes you need that. That's why I have so many different kinds of loops. Each dog needs a different kind of loop. Um, it's not going to let go if the dog falls off the table. They're going to sit there and hang. Now, I don't know. We should never leave dogs unattended on the table. We also know it happens a lot. Unfortunately, it happens more than we'd all like to admit. Even if you just step away five feet or three feet to pick something up, you're not at the table. It can happen in an instant. This type of loop can actually, if the dog leaps with enough force, cause a broken neck. It's not likely to happen, but I've heard of it happening. Curtis Hanby told a story of a person who was in the tub. She turned around to answer the phone, literally standing at the tub. The dog jumped out of the tub, and she heard the neck snap. It can happen. I don't like this type of loop except for around middles. I will use it around a middle because it will keep them secure, but I don't use it around a neck. Then we have this type of loop, which is a slide and a lock. It has a slide, which again, when the dog pulls on it, it's not going to go anywhere, but if the dog starts to fight, it will loosen up. It does slide open, and then the dog can wiggle out of it. Safer. It has a lock on it, too. It has a slide lock. It gets right there and prevents it from going any higher. I never use them really tight on a dog like that. I've seen people do it. I never do that. If I use a slip lock, it's just to keep it from getting any bigger. I want it big enough they can get out of their head, but not so big that they can do anything else. So this is better. It's still not great. Now, this is a groomer's helper loop. I never latch my groomer's helper loop. In fact, it's never been latched so much that it's really hard to latch. I never latch it. Some people do, some people don't. If you don't and the dog pulls, it will just slide up. If you lock it, that's not going anywhere. Now, it does have a fast, fast release under here, which helps a lot, but I still prefer to leave it loose so that if a dog pulls, it will slide open. The nice thing about the groomer's helper loops is that they have a D-ring here, which allows you to connect them to the groomer's helper. If I ever had to walk away from a dog that was attached to a groomer's helper, or if the dog was fighting severely and I needed it to hold them still, I would snap it shut. Because I primarily use my groomer's helper for spinners that just don't want to stand still, I don't need to lock it. It's nice to have the locking feature, don't get me wrong. It's just not something I personally use. And if a dog is fighting against a groomer's helper too much, this will slide up and the dog will come out. If you're using it as a tether tool, it would be tighter to the arm as well. An anti-bite tool. And I don't want to get into how this works because some people like it, some people don't, and I don't use it for anti-biting. I use it for anti-spinning. Um, if a dog is biting me that badly, it needs to go to a vet clinic, in my opinion. I don't need to fight with one that badly to get one done. But anyway, it will lock in place. Again, you can tell I haven't used it very much because it's so hard to lock. But because of how it slides up, it works great that way. It's very safe. Now, we have these in my bathtub, the cable loops. These are actually pretty fantastic. You see the water coming out of that one. You can tell it came out of my bathtub. These are pretty fantastic because they don't lock into place. I wouldn't want to use one on my grooming table per se, but I do use them in the bathtub. They don't rust. They don't get wet. They're, well, they don't stay wet. They lock down, but if a dog is pulling and tugging, it'll slide up and out. If a dog is jumping up, it'll push that right up and it can get right out of it. If you watch my video on how to bathe a dog later, You'll see Augie got out of one really easily, my own dog. So they're safe enough for that, but they do secure the dogs in the tub. You can groom with these as well. Um, they have a padded collar here to prevent the cable from cutting into the neckline. That's always a big plus. These are great around middles as well because of the padding. 
Now, let's see. Speaking of padded middles, a rear loop will steady a large dog or a weak dog. It will steady a spinner. And they make padded loops now. This happens to be a Romani loop. This is an MDC Romani middle belly strap. This is an extra large. And it would go around the belly. And she has chains that attach at the top and then it attaches to a grooming arm. When I'm using a rear loop, I'm usually using a table with two arms, which I will show you shortly. I have another table set up. If I, I can walk away from you because you're not going anywhere. Let me go ahead and show you my other table here. This is our drying table with two arms. As you can see, you would put a neck on one end and your loop on the other end for your rear. Again, using the groomer's looper, the groomer's helper extender loopers, it makes it much easier because you can control it the way you need to. Now, if you don't happen to have two arms, like on this table over here that I was sitting at, positioning back. There we go. And you need to use two loops. What I do with it, I'll take my loop. He won't stand up. He's just not going to do it. And I will slide it this way. And then I will take my middle loop, which again, I'm not going to use this one because it doesn't have the other item on it. It doesn't have the chains on it. We use that in my bathtub, so anyway, you would then, I connect it to the other loop. I connect it here. The reason I do that is if the dog spins, it won't get tangled. If you connect it at the top as well, which of course you wouldn't on this dog, if on a dog this size, it would be backwards. You'd have the longer one in the rear and they start to twist, they get tangled. And when they get tangled, it's a pain to get undone, plus it's not safe. I'm glad you're a stuffed dog and not a real one. Can you imagine? Hmm. The indignity. But that right there helps also keep a dog standing, keeps their rear secure. And again, like I said, there are several companies out there now making larger padded surfaces for bellies. I was always trained with a regular rear loop. And any time I have to step away from a dog, I put a rear loop on a dog. There may be a time every now and then I have to step away to answer the phone because somebody came in the door and I have to get to the desk fast. I try not to if somebody else is not in the room. Our grooming room is really small, so it's actually very safe. But if I ever have to, there's a rear loop that goes on. And the reason the rear loop is good, they can't get off the dog. They can't get off the table. If they do step off the edge of the table, it's going to pull them right back. If it's at the right height and everything is controlled correctly, they cannot possibly step off the table. That's why I was trained with a rear loop. We were never allowed to work without a rear loop on. Now I see it as a safety device. Now I want to get into the dangerous types of loops. And I don't happen to own one, so I'm having to be, I'm having to improvise here. I don't own one of the Lariat style groomers nooses because they are dangerous incredibly dangerous i have seen people use choke chains on grooming tables as grooming loops a choke chain dog pulls it gets tighter dog pulls it gets tighter it doesn't loosen up easily especially if you have it on wrong it will simply get tighter and tighter and tighter and choke your dog and you could have a major neck injury. You could have a big problem, especially should the dog decide to take a running jump and hang. They can die very quickly that way. They can break their necks. Very unsafe. Groomers nooses are made the same way. They are a slip, sometimes a cable, sometimes nylon, but they have a slip that goes through like this. And they are dangerous. Never allow one in my shop. I would never buy one. I would never in a million years own one. I cannot stress that enough. A grooming 
competitions, quite often you will see people use slip leads for grooming loops. Again, I have done it in a pinch when I forgot a loop with an incredibly well-behaved dog. It's not something I would ever recommend. And I know people who use them in grooming salons all the time. Again, they act like a choke chain. Do you see what my fingers are doing? And it's only been a couple of seconds. They're turning purple because the blood flow is cut off to them. Not cool. In fact, they're throbbing now. Um, a few minutes ago on a grooming forum on Facebook, I heard someone say they use these and then they wrap them at the top. Dog pulls, dog chokes itself. You wrap it tight enough to keep the dog's head up. It is putting pressure on the neck. And again, you can cause eye trauma. You can cause brain trauma. Now, if this is looped around enough times, and I have seen this done here and then tied off, again, in grooming competitions, I've seen it. I've seen it at dog shows. I've seen it in grooming salons. If your dog freaks out and you have to get them out, what do you do? How do you get them out? All you can do at that point is get a pair of scissors and cut that loop. And you've lost precious seconds. And you could end up again with eye trauma, neck trauma, or brain trauma. Should a dog that has been tied like that slip off the edge of the table? Do you see what just happened? It acts like a hangman's noose. It will choke your dog. It will cause serious injury or death. And all of this happens very, very quickly. A lot of people are not aware of what happens when a person is hanged. And I think as sad as it's going to be, I need to explain a little bit. An awful lot of times, people think that they, that they actually end up strangling from the groomers, from the hangman's noose, and that is not what happens. The bottom falls out from underneath them, just as if the dog fell off the table. The bottom fell out from underneath the dog at that point. What happens, in most cases, is the neck snaps. The weight of the person's body snaps the neck. Same thing happens with the dog sometimes. If the dog is, especially if they are thrashing and jumping and then all of a sudden they are off the table, boom. If, and this is important, I need to show this and I've got it all on the bottom. If you have it on this, which is a looser loop and that happens, The dog's going to slip out of it. The dog is not going to have all that weight on it. It's going to come right out. It cannot do that in a noose or a choke chain or a slip lead. It simply cannot do it. These would never be allowed in my shop either. Never. I have used them in the past, knowing what I know now and having read the stories and heard the stories. Never would this happen in my shop. Never. Sometimes things we were taught 20 years ago, we now learn are bad, and this is one of them. This is not safe. This should not be used. And I really do not understand why the lariat-type nooses, and I won't even call them loops, they are nooses, are actually being sold today, let alone being used in a shop. So let's recap how to use one safely. You want one that if the dog pulls, it loosens. And this is a really cheap one. I don't even know where it came from, but they make several with just slides similar to this that will work great for what we're doing, for the safety features we're looking for. Um, never leave a dog unattended on the table. If you must step away, rear loop and neck loop, or front loop. Whenever possible, loop under a leg and around one side of the neck. not around the neck. I understand that sometimes that's not possible. Keep the loop as loose as you can to just have control. Many times with a well-mannered dog, this is just there for psychological benefit. It doesn't do anything for a dog that's in control, except make them know that they're on the table and they need to stay there. Keeping a loop at the right length is probably the most important thing for safety. And that's what I love about this again. This gives you so much versatility. Let me see. 
Again, this is my groomer's helper arm, and they don't slide real easy, so get it up where I need it. Okay. Proper tension on a loop is secure enough to keep a dog on a table and to let them know that it's there, but not so loose that it's putting pressure, or not so tight rather that it's putting pressure or causing strain. You want it tight enough that they can't really get to the edge of the table easily. And you can adjust that here by doing this. This dog now can't even get to the edge of the table. He just can't. So proper length and proper tension are critical. And again, you want a loop that's not locked down. You want a loop that will come out of easily if they need to come out of it. And last but not least, quick release. That's critical for having a safe grooming loop experience. Hopefully you learned something. Maybe we saved a life or two today. Hopefully we caused you to think about what you're doing on a grooming table. Grooming table safety is critical to the safety of the dogs in our care. Can't stress how important that is. We are given responsibility to return these dogs in a healthy manner. And they should at least go home in as good a shape as they came in, if not better. Not dead. Not injured. And it's our job to learn how to make that happen. And by using the proper tools, we can ensure that it happens.